welcome back again in this video lecture I'll be talking about the difference between three different type of RNAs that are found in our cell okay that is mRNA rRNA and tRNA we'll talk about the structural differences as well as the functional differences between mRNA tRNA and rRNA in an eukaryotic cell so let's look at it let me first take a color okay now let's begin First, we'll talk about the structural differences between these three. You know, these three RNAs are important in a sense of a combinative fashion. All these three RNA have important roles ultimately in the process of transcription and after the transcription, the process of protein synthesis. And we need all of these RNA for specific work to do during the protein synthesis. For example, if we start with mRNA, has most of a linear structure in the primary structure with the uracil basis present and actually all the mRNAs all the type of RNAs contain uracil instead of thymine now if you look at here the linear structure is something like this normal mRNA carries all the codons for the protein synthesis codons are three nucleotide sequences which suggest a specific amino acid and it is specific for specific amino acids and the uh, mRNA generally contains a start codon where the process of protein synthesis begin and a stop codon where the protein synthesis end. Now the complicated version of this mRNA can be of a secondary structure. The mRNA secondary structure could be stem loop hairpin most of the time and stem loop and hairpin structure looks something like this as you see this is known as a stem loop where stem and formation of loop so the stems and loops are most common secondary structure among mRNA but the structures are less complicated compared to the tRNA and rRNA if you look at tRNA the structure of tRNA is known as clover leaf model and if you look at here it forms a specific typical structure of the tRNA it carries three specific stem loops okay three different loops one of them is known as anticodon loop and this anticodon loop is a specific area where they have three ribonucleotide sequence which interact and binds with its relative codon that is present on the mRNA and this anticodon codon interaction is very very important for bringing the specific amino acid sequence during the protein synthesis on the other hand this different units or 3 prime and 5 prime regions of the tRNA are specific to do specific functions for example the 3 prime region of the tRNA is allotted to interact with amino acid sequences okay it, it binds it with the carbonyl group COO and there are base pairing in the middle region of the stem but the loop is formed due to the unability of the formation of hydrogen bonds so this is the structure of tRNA and this is much struct this structure is drawn in two dimensions so it looks simple but actually it's a little more three dimensional and complicated now if we talk about the rRNA it is much complex secondary structure with several folds and loops if you look at here this is much complex and while the rRNA is much bigger it's a long RNA structure folded several times and you will see many bulges and loops and stems and hairpins forming in different regions of this RNA okay and among these three RNA our RNA is the most predominant form inside the cell okay because our RNA provides a structural unit and structural base to the ribosome so we require rRNA in very high amount for the formation of ribosomes and ribosomes are the protein synthesis factories now this rRNA may also have different varieties for example 16S rRNA 23S rRNA depending upon what kind of ribosome we are talking about rRNA and ribonucleoproteins together form ribosomes okay and for eukaryotes and prokaryotes the composition is a little different 
For example, in prokaryotes, we find this 16S rRNA present in the 30S subunit of the ribosome because you know prokaryotic ribosome have two units 50S and 30S while eukaryotic ribosomes have 60S and 40S. So, this 16S is a very very conserved sequence of the rRNA that is found in a specific region of the 30S subunit in prokaryotes. And modern way we can actually identify the 16S RNA sequence and small changes in the 16S RNA sequence will be very much beneficial for us to identify specific prokaryotic organisms. So it is taken as a bacterial classification scheme. Let's move on to the function of the mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. mRNA acts as a messenger of the DNA. So DNA is the boss that is present inside the nucleus is transcribed into mRNA inside the nucleus and that mRNA is transferred into the cytosol and then it is translated into proteins. Actually mRNA contains all the informations that a DNA have and then that is transferred to the mRNA in form of three nucleotide sequences known as codons. Okay? Once you read the codon, you will get proteins. Okay? If I look at here. DNA is present inside the nucleus, RNA is made, it is taken outside through the nuclear pore complex. Then this RNA is translated with the help of ribosome and tRNA. While tRNA carries amino acids during the protein synthesis, it is a transfer RNA. So it transfers amino acid sequences and it also brings those amino acid sequences one by another by reading the proper code of the mRNA and it will start adding those peptides together, those amino acids together. Who does that? Ribosome. Specific section of the ribosome do the catalytic activity of the peptide bond formation. Third is a rRNA and if you look at the rRNA structure, you will, it is a part of the ribosomal structural unit. So, if you look at here, this is the 30S smaller subunit, 50S larger subunit, you will have two different types of uh, rRNAs to be found there. So, in a summary, we can say that all this mRNA, rRNA and tRNA are required together to do the functionality of protein synthesis. Okay? Without any of this rRNA, without any of this RNAs actually we cannot synthesize protein inside the cell because there is a combination effort of all these RNA varieties that gives us the protein. For example, if there is no rRNA, ribosome will not be produced and the protein synthesis will not be possible. If there is no tRNA, who will carry the amino acid? There won't be any carrier, so protein synthesis will not be possible. If there is no mRNA, so there is no codon to read, so no transcript, no instructions to make something. So everything, all every aspect or every types of RNA have their own importance and they work together inside the cell. While in the structural varieties in case of eukaryotic cells, this mRNA produced at the early time contains uh, multiple things. Some part will be known as junk element known as introns, some part contains uh, the DNA sequences that will code for proteins uh, that, that contains uh, the gene sequences that code for proteins known as the exons. So there is further modifications required for the mRNA known as the mRNA processing and the modifications are 5 prime capping with guanyl residue and 3 prime polyadenylation. Those modifications are required to the mRNA only. It is not there for T and rRNA. Though those RNA have undergone different sort of modifications, but not this sort of modifications. So that in a sense is the overall feature of the M, T and R RNA. As you see, mRNA will be produced after the transcription inside the nucleus brought in the cytosol. And then inside the cytosol, T RNA will bring specific amino acid by binding with the codon with the help of anticodon loop. And then ribosome will sit there and rRNA in the ribosome will ultimately help to determine and catalyze the effect of 
peptide bond formation. So all these RNA involved together to synthesize the protein. So that is the difference in a sense between mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. I hope this video helped you out. If you like this video, please hit the like button and definitely put some comments because these are the new type of videos I am doing. So if you like this type of videos, I will be doing more and more of this different type of videos and different series. So feel free to comment and like and share this video. Thank you.